So my name is Luis Daniel Alegria. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Vamos. So Vamos is the event discovery platform that aggregates events from multiple platforms. So imagine yourself moving to a new city like Berlin. So there are several sources where you can find interesting things to do. You have blogs, you can ask friends, you can spend a lot of time. But what we do is we aggregate everything into one single platform. So you, we do the research for you. Well, it's pretty simple, right? We, we started with a very simple idea, which was help us find events on a map. And now today we can find events in over 50 countries. It's pretty awesome. It's a global product that started with a global vision from day one. And today we are serving over 100,000 users uh, with unique experiences all over the world. At, at, at the moment is uh, Berlin, then is Rome and Milan, and then comes Sao Paulo. So it's a little bit spread over. But Berlin is our main market, obviously, since we're here. And we have been pushing it quite a lot here. We raised 100,000 euros in 2012. Uh, and then from there onwards, we raised a couple of more, like in terms of some angel investors coming in. So we have been having a very small, let's say, running cost. So as a team of five, we've been kind of pushing on with around 200,000 for over two years now, or almost two years now. The story about Vamos is that uh, me and one of our co-founders were like traveling to Amsterdam and uh, we were sitting at a kebab shop wondering what can we do tonight in Amsterdam. And as every traveler, I guess, put themselves in this position, then they start to look at Lonely Planet, uh, Yelp, maybe searching on Google. And uh, what we found out was that all of the existing services out there that were recommending things to do were based on venues. So go to this bar, go to this nightclub, five star ratings. Um, and obviously we as uh, non-locals have no clue what's good or bad. So we went to one of those recommendations with really high ratings. It showed out to be a super cool venue, but a really bad event. And I think that was the day when we really were back. Like, the idea was born, like how can we find events instead of venues? And uh, ideally find them on the map, so it's easy and accessible to have, no matter where you are. And that was the beginning of Vamos, uh, once upon a time called the Event Compass. And uh, yeah, that's how it started. We started with a hackathon uh, in 2012, in February, where we brought like, people from different places to help us out to basically build the core or the very basic of, of Vamos. Um, from an idea into a prototype. And um, what happened from there was that we got so much enthusiasm, so many friends involved. Also the friends and family money came from this hackathon, the people actually attending the hackathon invested, that allowed us to take the next step, uh, which was to go leave our jobs and go full time with Vamos. That was a pretty awesome moment. And uh, in August 2012, we launched at the Tech Open Air here in Berlin. We have hype cycles, right? So we got started in 2012. We got a lot of press and attention, uh, which is great, like for like building the brand, getting the recognition of the local scene. Uh, then obviously what happened around 2013 and now around 2014 is that we've been laying a little bit under the radar. So what we've learned is that, okay, it's really great to build awesome momentum when it comes to press. But fundamentally, what really matters when it comes to building products is to figure out like how do you make sure that your retention is awesome, how to make sure that your referral rate is kick-ass, and uh, you know that's what really matters. Uh, so what we have done now is we've been under the radar for over six, seven months now, and now this week we are launching something new and exciting. We launched, with, I would say, with a, a product that was not uh, maybe there yet in the sense of it was not perfect, as every product, right? So we had to go through our canyon of pain, as we call it. You go from being up to going down, realizing a lot of stuff, and then if you are really, really determined, then you will start to climb the uphill. And that's what we did. We were working our asses off for like, you know, a year and a half, and now we're coming back uh, stronger than before with all of the learnings from before. And now we think we have at least what's supposed in our mind to be the best way to solve event discovery. And we're really confident about this, at least what we're seeing so far, the data is proving that that's what's going to happen. 
I think as every founder story is so rare, like at least many companies, you're going through a couple of rough times as a company. And what happened was that we ran out of funds. Uh, we were like on the verge to have to close down the company. Um, unfortunately, we lost a co-founder who couldn't carry on with us. Uh, the economical pressure was just too big. So we, we had to kind of uh, let him go, which was very sad for us. Uh, but at the same time, you know, like no harm or no, harm, no, no bad feelings in that sense. Everything is, is good. We're still friends uh, and uh, we move on. That's how it works. So the other founders are uh, Jens Dressler. He's our CTO and co-founder. Um, then we have also David Prentel, who is our CMO, making sure to work with all of the press. And then we have our team, of course, with, with uh, our web developer and a community manager who has joined us uh, in the past couple of months. So yeah, Vamos has been built by more or less one person, at least technically, uh, front end and back end, which is extremely impressive. Um, and I think this is one of the most important things. It's like when you get started, it's really important that you bring the right components to place. So like someone who knows what to do when it comes to product, someone who knows what to do when it comes to marketing and building a brand, and someone who knows what it takes to take an idea into a business, into the next level. And I think you know all of these kind of things is obviously learning by doing, uh, but we're learning really quick and we're working really hard. So we, we launched at the Tech Open Air 2012, as, as mentioned earlier, and um, we got approached by Deutsche Welle. They were asking for, like, they were looking for early stage companies that they could follow and make a documentary about. So obviously for us, it was a great opportunity to get exposure, to get like a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, awareness around Vamos, especially to an international audience. Um, and then since then, you know, the, the guys have been sticking with us. So now we're entering and they started the second season, which is a little bit crazy. Uh, they've been following us literally from day one, uh, which has been uh, a lot of ups and downs. Uh, and obviously they've been there to capture that. So sometimes I'm a little bit embarrassed to see myself on that camera, but hey, it's, uh, it's part of the journey. Most of the time they're following us in, in real life scenarios in the sense of like we're doing, we're going to events, we're talking to investors, we're doing real things that I guess you have to do as a startup. Like, so they've been following us in that sense. Sometimes, yes, of course, it, it's a little bit awkward to have a camera with you everywhere. And I guess that's I guess how most of the people will re react to that. So we ask for privacy when we need privacy and, and they follow us when they can follow us. So it's been a pretty mutual relationship and, and been pre pretty well documented. Well, so, so far, I think, you know, the entire roller coaster has been fantastic. You know, like as, as any roller coaster, the downhills are scary as hell. But then when you're going up again, you kind of are prepared for the second downfall. Uh, and as long as you're, you're ready to go through this journey, then I think you're pretty strong to almost do anything. And I think this is one of the most kind of uh, in insightful learnings for me is that, okay, don't give up when it feels really tough. Uh, make sure to kind of have a very clear stand on what you believe the future of your product is. Of course, it will fail along the way. Uh, but if you're certain of, of what you really believe uh, in the product that you're making really makes a difference and it's worthwhile, then you know, go for it. And I think that's the biggest learning for me so far. Never give up. I, th I think you know we were very naive in the beginning. You know, uh, I think you know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to say. Like, you know, we, when we went out, launched uh, Vamos and everything. I was remembering we actually have in uh, some interview somewhere. I was saying that, yeah, getting one million users, no problem. We will have that next year. We thought that things would be easier than they actually are. Um, obviously, gaining more traction, getting more virality and engagement and all these kind of things that are so crucial when it comes to building, especially mobile products. And then um, obviously, if we would have been a little bit more humble, if we would have potentially listened more to people who have done it in the past, we would have been able to do things 
slightly better or much better and obviously that's hard to say uh, in, at this point um, but uh, I, I think you know that's one of the mistakes but you know as, as every journey you have to fail in order to move forward. We have a small small team having lower running costs uh, but obviously we're always looking for great people to join our team especially developers at this stage since what we really are car carrying on working moving forward is to make our, our platform even more accessible and more efficient as it is today. Yeah, we, we haven't raised money from, from public funds uh, like IBB. Nevertheless, we did receive um, a grant uh, basically from IBB to do, conduct some research which is pretty nice. So we got some, some funds to, to really kind of dedicate a team, a research team, to figure out like who is Vamos' uh, business partners, potential business partners, and trying to get learnings and insights from what really drives them. And this has always been really great. Well, like we, 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 as a product, like we have two different audiences, right? So we have the users, which we're helping finding events. And on the other hand, we're having an event organizers who are looking for people. So Vamos' role in this ecosystem, in this world, is to make sure to match those two together. So the better recommendations we can give our users, the more likely it is that they will actually attend the events. So Vamos is a technology company in that sense, and we are serving event organizers, brands, and agencies who are organizing events. This can be reoccurring, this can be one-off events, and we are, that's basically where we make our money. The way we see it is that, okay, in order to be able to charge and monetize on organizers, it's very important that the business model is very straightforward and simple. So what we do is that we try to educate the organizers that, okay, if you know that a customer is worth 20, 30 euros when they're showing up at the door, or let's say uh, spending on an evening out, then obviously for them to acquire them for two, three euros is pretty easy math. So you pay a fee to bring them there and you make money of the, from them being there. And that's kind of the very lead generation um, kind of approach. The other one is the advertising, which is more the promotion, the more classical one, where we're working with pro uh, promoting certain brand messages or certain events um, inside of Amos to highly targeted audience who are looking for events. Well, like the, the event industry at itself is huge, right? It's, it's around 50 billion dollars, uh, Europe and US combined. Now, like there is said that 40% of all of the tickets uh, to events remains unsold. And the main reason why is because simply people didn't know about them. So there is a big discovery problem in the market, and that's where we're coming in, trying to help organizers and people to match and find each other. So if we can take a piece of that pie, I think you know, we, we are definitely up to something really huge. So, so, so Ticketmaster is one of our partners. We're working with Eventim now also, which is our latest partner, Eventbrite. So all of the big ticketing providers, we see themselves as our partners and, 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 and future partners. And they, instead of seeing us as a competitor, they're seeing us as an event distribution channel. So we help their events to get more visibility and therefore they sell more tickets, which end of the day is what they want. So we are basically in this space to serve all of the ticketing providers. We're here to help people to find great events and we're making sure to make discovery easier, no matter where you are. Absolutely, I think so we definitely want to look into how to create uh, events in our platform, user-generated content, definitely. It's important though to have this balance. I think, you know, like we, obviously when event organizers come to us, we need to be able to provide them uh, good services. So sometimes we might refer them to one of our partners, Sometimes we might be able to host it on our platform, as, especially like a guest list service, for example. So I think becoming a platform allows you to explore, uh, explore more uh, into what are the customers' needs. And based on that, we act upon it. Um, but as of right now, we are not having event creation because what we're solving right now is event discovery. And then if we want to move into another space later on, then that's what the future will tell us. Yeah, but 
that's the, the strategy for now. There are not that many direct competitors. The closest to us are probably bands in town and Songkick, but they are focusing mainly, or the majority, on the music and the band discovery. And we are making sure to have a diverse catalog of events. So it can be everything from a music concert, to a party, to a sports event, to an art exhibition, and so on and on. Which allows us to be that one-stop shop that everyone can go to to find events, no matter where they are. I think it has something to do with the culture, like uh, the fiesta culture, people having smartphones. Um, I think this is uh, something that appeals Latin American uh, culture in general, Spanish people, it, like Italians and, and so on. Like, I think it's, it's, um, it re really kind of, uh, for some reason, it has a little bit more stickiness there. Um, hard to say, but the, I think the culture has a big, big importance there. The biggest business challenge, of course, as, as, as everything, is, is to make sure to gain that like, exponential growth because our model, end of the day, is very dependent on our active user base. So without an active user base to make monetization really work is very hard. So this, it goes a little bit like this. And obviously that's, that's uh, the reality when you have no marketing budget to push. Um, but then, as I said before, it's, like, it's not that much about uh, pushing, it's more about like, seeing what organic growth is having. It reaches it reach an exponential growth or it doesn't. Everything in between, you can make pushes. But. Okay, well, I think Ableton is one of the most like, awesome startups in, in town. Like, uh, they're not getting the, uh, that much attention, uh, maybe that's not part of their uh, strategy. Uh, but they're doing some pretty awesome stuff over there, like building the hardware and software, which is pretty amazing. I think also SoundCloud is doing a pretty awesome job when it comes to reaching hundreds of millions of people by distributing, distributing like musicians' uh, music. This is pretty fantastic. And also I am, of course, like they have done a great job from being, you know, a photo sharing app, which people were like in the beginning wondering, oh, but this is very similar to Instagram, to now really kind of going into this direction that like mobile photography for like pro amateurs is what they're really dominating and there's some really really great pictures on IAM and I'm really really happy and, and proud of them. Now you know a little bit more about Vamos, a little bit more about me, so now it's the only thing that is left is for you to get Vamos. So go into getvamos.com and download it or use our web platform. I think you'll love it. Cheers!